Welcome to the Wear, Wag, Repeat podcast. I'm Tori Mystic, here with my dogs, Lucy and Bert. Together, we're interviewing cool, creative women entrepreneurs in the pet industry. Do you dream of working alongside your dog? Then sit, stay, and listen to the latest episode to find the inspiration and resources that will help you grow your own dog-inspired business. In this episode, I'm talking to Kristen Kidd, a social worker turned photographer who has combined those two passions into a new coffee table book called The Woman's Best Friend Project. In this conversation, she shares a few of the stories from the book that really stand out in her mind, and we talk about how she captures the emotional bond between women and their dogs or other loved ones in photos. She also shares some of her advice for staying grounded while managing a busy business. For over a decade, Kristen Kidd nurtured a dedication to professional photography and a career as a social worker. This allowed her to hone her skill for deep understanding and connection with clients. At the beginning of 2017, she stepped away from her social work career to focus on photography full-time, finding a niche working with families both two-legged and four-legged. This move led her to ask women a simple question. When has your dog been there for you in ways other humans could not? The response was overwhelming and thus began the Woman's Best Friend Project. This initiative is about raising money for animal rescue through stories about women's bonds with their canine companions. In addition to helping dogs find their forever homes, Woman's Best Friend Project is about erasing stigmas associated with grief, depression, anxiety, breed discrimination, and loving our four-legged friends as much as we love some humans, and sometimes more. (laughs) Kristen calls Philadelphia home, and when she isn't capturing the precious lives of two-legged and four-legged families, she enjoys traveling, hiking, and camping with her husband and their fur babies, Hudson and Nito. Hey, Kristen. Hey. (laughs) <laughs> I'm so excited to talk to you. This is such an amazing and inspiring project that you've started. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been quite the fun whirlwind. <laughs> so I know you, you know, I read in your bio that you started asking people, you know, about how their dogs have, have supported their life or been there for them when other people really couldn't support them in certain ways. Like, how did you even get inspired to ask that question? And When you started asking that question, why did you want to document the responses? Yeah. So um, every photo experience that um, I have with um, a family or an individual um, starts with a conversation. And that conversation um, really digs into what the experience means for them, um, why they're there, um, how we can stop and reconnect to what's most important in our lives. Um, and I had worked really closely with uh, Harley's Haven Dog Rescue for about two years before the, uh, the book um, came to fruition. Um, and so um, with that, I found myself for about two years sitting across from women um, who were having photo experiences with their pets um, and telling me what their bond and what their connection meant to them. And so many times in the story of them, um, there was a story about how their dog had been there for them in ways that other, uh, that, that humans could not be there for them. Um, and in hearing those stories come to life, it just became abundantly clear that there is something important here uh, that that other, not only women, but other people just in general could benefit from, from hearing these stories and knowing that they're not alone in those experiences, uh, but also um, knowing that they're not alone in their tremendous love and connection and bond with their uh, four-legged family members. Um, and so that was really uh, where it began. And so many times women sat across from me and they would tell me their story about this connection and bond and how they had been there for them in ways that uh, other humans couldn't be there for them. Um, and they would end with saying, and I know that makes me crazy, 
uh, for how crazy I am about my pets. And I just really wanted to create a world in which not only did they not feel isolated in their experiences, um, that they could feel a sense of community, um, but also knew that they weren't in love about how crazy in love they were with their pets. <laughs> I love that. And, and I totally feel you like when I, cause I mean, I am, maybe I should stop saying that I am a self-professed crazy dog lady because it does kind of, um, you know, use that kind of self-deprecating <laughs> tone about cra crazy dog lady. But, um, you know, right. you hear so many people and in, in what I do, I come across so many people who say things like, I know that my, my dogs aren't really, aren't real kids or like, you know, people will post things. I mean, I posted, I forget what I posted, something about my dogs and my, I'm sure it was some crazy obsessed thing. Um, and some dude commented right. like, you are deranged. They are not real children and blah, 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 blah. And so of course I, you know, sent him a gif about like by Felicia or something like that <laughs> <laughs> to, um, Right. To kind of get right. rid of him because like yeah. that doesn't have a that negativity does not have a place in my life. I don't really care if you want to criticize um, our our passion, you know, like the people in my community, you know, you can't come in here and criticize us for how much we love our dogs because they just have such an amazing influence right. on on all of our lives. So, you know, and I, I think that we hear so many stories in the news about um men and women who, you know, come back from war and the amazing power that their dog has to allow them to be part of society again, you know, people who were terrified to even leave their, their home. So um, dogs are just amazingly, amazingly powerful creatures in our lives. Yeah. Um, was yeah. there a story as you were as you were kind of putting together the book and and interviewing people? Was there a certain story that touched you the most? Um, yeah. So there's there's it's hard obviously to pick like a favorite. There's a few that just kind of like resonate in my heart a little bit louder maybe than other stories, um, or that just stand out. Um, in some distinct way to me. And what I love about that is that it'll be different stories for different people that stand out. And so that, you know, just, just for me, um, there, there are, yeah, it's, um, and, and a couple of the ones that stop, that stand out in my head, uh, are, uh, the story of Mariana and Misa, um, who Mariana came home. Um, I'm not going to spoil the story, but, <laughs> but Mariana came home, um, one day and when she walked through her door, she discovered that her entire life had changed in arriving home in that moment that she arrived home. Um, and everything that she thought was one thing was now another thing. Um, and she, there's just no steadiness in her life at that moment. Um, and she brought Misa into her life. She adopted Misa and it turned out that Misa mirrored a lot of the need for stability and steadiness, um, that Mariana was not experiencing in her life at that time. Um, and so the two of them had to build a life together. And it was kind of like they just hunkered down and were like, yeah, this is really hard. Life is really hard right now. Um, and we're going to build a world together. And I'm going to be there for you, Misa. And I'm going to give you structure and safety and love. Um, and Misa was right there for her as well. Um, and, and every day, as she said, every day would get better and better. And the exploration became, how do we wake up and make each day better? And so they were able to just build this world together and find safety and stability. So that was one story. Um, another one. That's a beautiful yeah. story. And I, I love how it's about just like the day to day, because your dog is not only there for you for like when big things happen mm -hmm. for big good things or big bad things. Mm -hmm. um, but they're there every single day for you. Yeah. So that's, 
That's a really inspiring story. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's, it's, um, it's the big things. It's the small things. It's the good day that's elevated to an amazing day when you walk through the door, right? You know, you had a great day and they're there to celebrate with you, tail wagging and all. They're like, I don't know what's <laughs> going on, but I'm all about it. Let's have a great day. Um, and then it's, it's the days when we're at our lowest lows when, when they are, are there for us in exactly the way we need them to be there. And that was one thing that I love too about the, about the stories in the book too was every woman had different needs and needed to be met in a different way. And their dog was there for them in that way. Um, you know, Kim and Sullivan, uh, Kim experienced tremendous uh, loss uh, in the span of six months of her father passing away, her mother passing away, and her um, and her dog passing away. And wow. Sullivan, her other dog, was there for her. And as we talked and, and her story just was kind of laid out before us and, and we were exploring it together. Um, the thing that resonated for both of us was that Sullivan was the witness. Um, and that's extremely powerful. Anyone who has experienced tremendous grief um, understands and knows that the witness to your experience in that grief is a, is a very treasured uh, person. Um, they they know what happened. They watched it unfold, and they were there with you through that entire experience. Um, so that idea of of the witness was a really powerful one in her story. Um, and then de uh, dealing with anxiety um, was a huge reoccurring theme in our mm -hmm. book. Um, and Kathleen um, has an amazing Boston Terrier named Champ. Shout out to Champ. Um, who, when she would be experiencing a panic attack, she would have Champ come to her and sit with her. And she would actually, because Champ's smaller, she would actually hold Champ close to her chest. And what she found was that she measured her breathing in regulation with Champ's breathing. And so though he wasn't a therapy dog by training, I, she was able to come down, de-escalate her panic attack by simply tuning into the presence of Champ and breathing with him, which is extremely meditative, right? Yeah. And would, would yeah, de -escalate like yoga and down. meditation is yep. all about breathing breath. Right. I just did a post. Um, we had, we got some new dog toys that are called yoga hounds. Yes. Um, and they're like yoga inspired, yep. um, cute little dog toys. But I, I did a whole post about how to, uh, I went to a doga class. Um, and one of the things we learned was mindful petting, which sounds a little weird, but, um, it was just like, like being really mindful. Like, you know, people say I right. pet my dog all the time, right. but this was like, taking a moment, setting it aside, really being present for that and mm -hmm. petting your dog very slowly from the top of their head to the base of their tail and then mm -hmm. feeling kind of all over their body and just mm -hmm. slowing down um, and being there with them. But yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt, but no, um, that's th perfect. These, like, that's yoga exactly. principles, mm -hmm. I think, are something that dogs just know naturally and <laughs> we can learn so much from them. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And it's that state of mindfulness and that state of presence. And it's actually a therapeutic tool that's used by therapists all the time to bring people back to center when they're um, experiencing a trauma or, or, um, or a sense of panic or anxiety is to, to start not only noticing what's around you, but to call it out and name it what it is. And so, you know, the wall is blue and the carpet is gray and the, and, and it brings you back to now. And what I heard time and time again throughout the book was with uh, the women that were experiencing anxiety was their dogs helped bring them out of that state of panic or anxiety or PTSD experience um, by having them by them close to them, petting them, sinking their breathing. Um, and very few of the dogs in the book are actually, um, licensed therapy dogs. Um, you know, these are, these are our, our pets just, you know, being there for us, um, no matter what. That's huge. I love it. 
How many stories do you have in this first issue of the book? There's 43 stories featured, uh, featured in this uh, volume of the book. And do you plan on doing a second volume? Oh yeah, <laughs> is it already in the works? <laughs> um, it's I, very soon. Uh, so everybody, stay tuned uh, because what this was just so this was just one of the most rewarding experiences in my career thus far, just from the beginning to the end. Right, um, the money that we've been able to raise for the rescue has been a total game changer for them, which has been so awesome. So far, we've raised six thousand dollars for Harley's Haven Dog Rescue from the project. That's amazing. It is, I know, and it's because of the courage and boldness and awesomeness of these women telling their stories. Um, and being a part of it. And, and it, that is just, I, I still can't even believe it. Right. And we're still raising money for the rescue because all the profits from the book sales are going back to the rescue. Um, so as people buy books, those profits are going back to Harley's Haven Dog Rescue. So with volume two, um, I'm excited to open the doors for other rescues to apply to be the beneficiaries. Um, so it won't be too long before we'll be putting that out in to the interwebs and <laughs> opening up applications for rescues to apply to be a part of uh, a part of the project um, and receive um, the the profits from volume two's book sales um, and that's going to be really really exciting and a lot of fun um, part of the thing about doing a project like this that I love, I love doing projects. I love doing photo projects. I love them having a nonprofit angle and I have an idea and I put it out into the universe and then the universe says, okay, sure. Or, eh, what about this? <laughs> and just seeing that, having it, having so much of it be merely an idea and then, and then the world just does with it what it will um, yeah. is just awesome to see happen. Yeah. You set the idea in motion and then it just kind of right. takes yeah. off. Right. Yeah. Well, and I think it's also really inspiring. Anytime I um, talk to other people who are entrepreneurs, like there's nobody back here behind us, like telling us to finish this project, do this work. Like these right. are just ideas that you, this is an idea that you came up with. And, you know, I know everyone listening to this is is also really amazing. Um, but you know, we all have ideas and, and we're just accountable to ourselves really to get it all done. And so this was no small undertaking. It sounds like a, a really big project <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> that, you, that you've put together. So, I mean, you know, it's one thing to have, have this great idea, but then to see it through and, and make it, you know, into like a big thing like this, I think mm -hmm. is, um, is something that most people don't ever get to that point. So. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's, that's kind. Um, yeah, it's, it, uh, it's been, it's been a lot of fun and, uh, and it, I think it takes a certain level of naivete as well uh -huh. for any, for any entrepreneur, the, the hope and the faith in what you're doing has to supersede any doubt that you have. Right. Yes. Um, and that's the drive. Like that's, I think that's where it's at. Um, and so <laughs> there's a lot of, um, kind of pushing aside the what ifs. And, and holding steadfast to, um, what's possible. And yeah. if, if I've learned anything in entrepreneurship and in opening myself to possibilities is I've just seen possibility after possibility come to fruition. And really my question has stopped being what if, and my question has been, if this is possible, what else is possible? Yes. Yeah. The sky is the limit. <laughs> and right. I, I want to point out when you say possibility, I hear possibility. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of course. <laughs> All right, of course. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so, so this, so this project, the, the woman's best friend project is all about women and their dogs. Mm -hmm. Um, so can you tell us like, what, what is the difference? Because you also work with you know, regular human families. <laughs> yeah. So what is the difference between doing a photo session with, um, with, you know, human kids versus fur kids? 
nothing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there, there are some nuances. Okay. But I will, I will tell like every family that I work with, look, like photographing your pups is a lot like photographing toddlers. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> and part of that comes down to, we are going to, we're going to receive what they give us. Right. <laughs> because the angle that I kind of come from in the photography that I'm doing there is little to no sit here and look at my camera lens Mm -hmm. Um, because that's not what it's about. And I tell people I can show up every day and take a pretty picture, but that is not what it's about. It's about telling the story of what is most important to you, um, what you love, the essence of who you are as a family or as an individual. And it's about stopping and reconnecting. And when we look at that, most of the time that revolves around us being like truly, truly being being together um, as a couple or as a family or um, present with ourselves in our own uh, journeys to becoming our truest selves as individuals. Um, And so what does that mean? Where do we find that strength or that joy or that delight or whatever it is that represents to us? And, And so, you know, and when I hear, when I hear, you know, a father talk about um, how he loves, you know, coming home and immediately he just gets on the carpet and the kids pile on him and that is his place of bliss. And he has left behind everything that was on his shoulders as he was walking through that door. Right. And that is where he remembers why he works so hard and what, you know, he does, why he does it. This is his why. This is his place of bliss. Right. That's what we're photographing because, you know, sometimes you walk through the door and life's crazy. It's hectic. The dog threw up. The kids, are <laughs> the kids are throwing things and you know that you love your world. You know that you love everything, but you need to be reconnected to, to the presence of when you're aware of what it is that you love most and what's important to you. And so photographing that and then creating it into um, wall art that is anchored to your walls and then anchors you to your why. So when you walk through the door, you're like, yep, that's it. Like no matter what's happening, that's it. This is, this is my why. And that, you know, pet families, human families, couples, individuals, all of it applies in that way. Um, So, but with photographing uh, human children and four legged children, um, you know, it still remains that it's all about considering who they are, what their personalities are, uh, what they love, what their humans love most about them, um, what it is that makes them interconnected and bonded, um, and how they like to spend time together. Um, so probably the biggest difference is, I, uh, you know, you don't play fetch with your kids. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, um, Otherwise, it's it's all telling the same the same stories Um, or not the same stories, but it all comes from the same place. Yeah, the similar emotions. And I I love that picture that you just painted in all of our minds of, you know, kids and that could be human kids or dog kids. Right. Jump jumping on their dad when he walks in the door. And just I was I'm just imagining what that photograph would look like. And how much more joyful that would be than, for instance, a family portrait with everyone wearing khakis and white shirts, like standing pose together, (laughs) which is, I think, what a lot of people go to when they when they get family photos. But um, I love your approach. And I think that um, that it's so special to capture the emotional connection. And it's hard to do that visually, but it sounds like you have a real handle on it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And quite frankly, it's an honor um, to be ushered into people's worlds um, and to to hear what it is that's most, most important to them and, and where they get their meaning from in life and day to day um, and what their hopes and dreams are. Um, there are a lot of parallels to the social work that I did uh, for 13 years. Um, and it was that same honor to, I still, as a social worker, I walked into people's homes, people told me their hopes and their dreams and what was most important to them. And we were creating and building something, um, that they could lean into Mm -hmm. and, um, take ownership of 
and just just ex- experience the greatest meaning of their life that they could that they could cultivate. Um, and we're doing that here. Um, the end result is that we're creating wall art that takes them to that place emotionally. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, I, I feel like you've just said so many profound things that I'm going to switch <laughs> gears and ask you like a very surface level question. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> but, you know, people are listening to this while they're walking their dogs. They've got limited time. <laughs> I know. No, sorry. We're solving the problems of the world here. So, <laughs> um, okay. So now for my like totally different question, um, I always ask all of my guests, about the tools and resources that help them yeah. run their business, because I think that um, is kind of what can really up level your business if you're doing something as like a side hustle right. to you know making it more profitable. Is these kind of tools that make you more productive? So, do you have anything that you rely on to do what you do? Oh yeah, um, <laughs> yes. Photographers, so- by the way, <laughs> always have like the best tool recommendations oh, awesome. in my awesome. experience. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to disappoint. Let me pull it together. Um, no. So, uh, I meditate every day that, that is, that is huge. <laughs> so, you know, any business that you're running, I think, um, and I didn't realize how huge it was until after the first full year of me fully taking on my photo business. And I was like, okay, I really want to get some structure around my daily life and my personal boundaries. Because I think when you start a business, you kind of are willing to let just pull out all the stops and just, just go with it. Right. And in that sense, you, you're like, yes, you're saying yes to everything, which is awesome. Um, but there's a point at which you have to say, okay, I can't let the car drive itself, um, right now. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, this, this could get crazy. Um, it's just too overwhelming. So, you know, what are the boundaries? What do I need? And, and honestly, I went to a life coach who was, uh, amazing, um, and, uh, true you health solutions, major plug. Uh, so, <laughs> but I, I loved, I loved everything about that experience because it was all about figuring out who I needed to be in this new world that I was creating. And one of the biggest things that surprised me was I never knew that like meditation was, you know, going to be part of my life. And I was like, oh yeah, I need this. This is great. This is very centering. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> um, and so it became a part of my daily practice and it opened, again, if this is possible, what else is possible? That's where I went to with that experience personally. Um, so that's huge. Um, other tools of uh, my photography business, um, I'll pivot more toward uh, toward the business aspect, the businessy aspect of it and say... Um, there's a lot of audiobooks I love listening to or books I love reading um, and just gleaning the wisdom of people who are doing things in a way that I believe I believe in. Um, and so I love everything that Seth Godin ever has to say. Um, it's very people centric. Um, and I, I just love that. Um, also, Donald Miller, um, both of this, uh, you know, their uh, their work is just laden with um, people centric, positive approaches um, to running a business um, and very concrete, right? Like you do this and this is what happens. Yeah, uh, very clear takeaway. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So that's huge. Um, and then honestly, it's a lot of the things that help my life over well, overall be well. Um, that are most beneficial to my business. Because if I can't be the person that I need to be, I certainly can't run the business that I need to run. And so I feel like while I could talk about, you know, workflows and things like that, um, and, and the gear that I use and, you know, all these technical de- uh, details, I, I honestly, the biggest things that help me do what I do is are the things that help me be the person that I personally need to be. So I surround myself with a lot of positivity. Um, yes. 
Yeah, absolutely. And so I follow a lot of people in social media because I have to be on social media a lot. Um, and so I follow a lot of people whose words I believe in and I find inspiring. And then I take that and put it back into the world as well. So taking their wisdom, letting that, um, like wash through me and then how can I make that apply to what I'm doing? Um, and so there's a lot of podcasts that I, I listen to such as on being with Krista Tippett. Mm. Yeah. Um, and there's just powerful conversations in there. I'm like, yeah, that's how I want to live my life. And yeah, that's how I want to run a business. And let me take all of that goodness and put it back into the world. Yeah. That's wonderful. I love it. Yeah. Well, Kristen, um, those are all such great recommendations. Now I have like a whole reading list of things or a podcast list of things <laughs> to, <laughs> yep. to queue up. I actually, I go to the, I get a lot of books from the library and um, I just requested, I go through like phases of where I'll want to read novels and then I'll want to read business yeah, books. great. So I just got an email this morning that like four business books I ordered are ready for pickup. So um, I'm excited to kind of dive into that and get inspired by all of those things as well. Um, yeah. So tell us, we uh, unfortunately have to wrap up our time here, but tell everyone where they can find you online and where they can learn about Women's Best Friend Project and buy the book too. Absolutely. All right. So you can uh, find me uh, at Kristen Kid Photography on Instagram and Facebook. Also at the Lifestyle Dogtographer on Facebook. Ooh. Woo. <laughs> um, and at Woman's Best Friend on Instagram and Twitter. Um, you can purchase a copy of the book uh, for yourself from Woman's Best Friend Project. Dot com. Um, it's a beautiful 12 by 12 fine art coffee table book made in Italy. It's handcrafted. It is gorgeous. Um, so you can get that there. Um, and you can reach out to me directly at info at Kristen, uh, Ked photography .com. Um, you can shoot me an email if you would love your, your own two legged or four legged or individual photo experience. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. This was so much fun. Thank you for listening to the Wear, Wag, Repeat podcast. You can fetch show notes at wearwagrepeat.com. If you like what you hear, please hit subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And until next time, we'll see you around the dog park.